A change in the return game pays immediate dividends with a record performance from Daquan Hardy. What else he does against UMass to earn some special recognition. There's some things that, that are just going to have to organically happen. The recent history all favors the bad guys. Penn State needs to avoid costly miscues late in the game. The other things necessary for the Nittany Lions to gallop out of the horseshoe with a monster road victory. I will be there. We got your back. Let it fly, let it fly, let it fly. Just relax and have your fun. And our impact interview is with former first team all Big Ten QB Daryl Clark. His message to fellow Ohio native Drew Aller and why his appearance at Ohio Stadium was so personal. It's time for Nittany Game Week. Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome to Nittany Game Week. I'm Todd Sadowski alongside former Nittany Lions coaches Jay Paterno and Tom Bradley, who, as you can see, is not here in the studio, but is joining us from Pittsburgh this week. Penn State reaches the halfway point of the regular season undefeated. 3-0 in the conference. They manhandle UMass after a bye week. Only one thing to say, it's now time to bring on the Buckeyes. Well, you've kept wanting to talk about them for the last couple, and the coach in me is like, no, don't mention it. Now we can finally talk about it. Yeah, it's finally here, Tom. When a team reaches the halfway point, 6-0, the first thing you start thinking about is the first play of the next game. Now you're getting ready for the next game. Don't look ahead. Stay focused on what you have to get done because that's the most important game. I know it's Ohio State coming up, but even if it wasn't, Take care of your business. Well, Washington gets a little jump ahead of Penn State with their victory over Oregon. Nittany Lions slip a spot in the ranking. Seven in the AP, six in the coaches poll. We have a quick recap of their march over the Minutemen, and then it's all about the showdown in the horseshoe and our opening drive. We talked about evaluating all three phases of their game in the bye week, and they put Daquan Hardy back to return punts, and he becomes the first Nittany Lion ever to return two for a touchdown in a single game. That's pretty impressive. The, to the special team's credit, the first one was blocked incredibly. Second one was a lot more challenging for him, but you get you get two in one game. That's a heck of a day. You're going to have some spend some time, get some younger guys in the game, get them some reps. They're going to, you know, they haven't been out there that much. You gave them an opportunity to show what they can do. There's always little things you pick up from every, any, every practice, every workout, every game. They keep everyone healthy, empty the sidelines to get a lot of guys playing time against UMass. As a defense, we just want to focus on the, the fundamentals and techniques, um, just to stay sharp and play to our standard. Uh, coming off a bye, I mean, refresh is an emphasis to start fast and do what we do. Well, it's the second shutout in three games for the defense as they allow a little over 100 yards total from UMass. Well, now it's on a lot tougher opponent. You, you know, you look at these games as a great opportunity to test yourself, but you know. Now you get a team like Ohio State. How do you approach them? To win at Ohio State, you know, first of all, you know, the one number one ingredient is you're going to have to be tough. I mean, you have to come out from the get go and be tough and be ready to play football. It's a great venue. It's a great place to play. It's, you know, it's my second favorite place to play after Beaver Stadium. And they got great football fans out there. They're going to be ready to play, and you know, they're not going to let you just walk in that door and you know. So you go out and play. You can have some fun. Now, this is video from last year's setback, 44-31. We don't expect that many points, but like some of the other recent losses versus the Buckeyes, it slips away in the fourth quarter. The Indian Lions know they match up well with their personnel. This year's team has not had any games hanging in the balance in the final minutes. Coach Franklin expects another tight one with OSU. You got to be able to win big games in the fourth quarter. You got to be able to win you know, one possession games. Uh, we practice those things and practice a lot with two-minute drills and, and things like that. But, but yeah, there's, there's some things that, that are just going to have to organically happen. Um, but we expect this to be one of those types of games. The late miscues home and away have crushed their hopes. Coach Franklin insists his team is more balanced than before, and they have taken very good care of the football. And this year's test is in the horseshoe for a young quarterback. There's your first start your first conference road game, and then the first monster road challenge. If you're Drew Aller, add to it, he's going back to his home state of Ohio to try and knock off the Buckeyes, Jay. Well, I think the important thing is everyone's going to talk about they haven't beaten Ohio State. In the At the end of the day, this team has never played that Ohio State team. you got to focus in on the guys that are here, not history, 
and not the future just now. And I think they do that. They got a chance. They take care of the football. That's going to be critical. And that's good advice for Drew Aller as well, Tom. Just concentrate on the game. It's going to be a great chance for him to go home in front of his, the fans and people that he knows where he grew up. And so I think that's going to be pretty exciting for him. And uh, just enjoy it. Well, Drew was asked about ticket requests from his friends and family. He said he's not sure how many and that he can't worry about it. He did grow up to going to Ohio State games as a kid, but is confident the Nittany Lions are ready when things kick off at noon. They're a very passionate fan base, uh, but, you know, I think it, I think it's nothing we're not prepared for. We, we practice in very loud environments all the time. I'm sure you got I'm sure you guys hear the speakers on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. So, yeah, I mean, I think we're going to be prepared for it. But at the end of the day, it's just going out and executing our jobs and just being sound in our assignments. 181 pass attempts without an interception, 12 touchdowns, pretty impressive for the first year starter. Those passing windows are going to get a little smaller at the horseshoe. Now, the past three trips to Columbus have been especially painful to endure. Andrew Callista says enough is enough. It's time to close one out in Columbus. Finally, Penn State plays a top tier team. This is what sports is all about. To be the best, you got to test yourself to see how you measure up. PSU fans probably don't like that philosophy because it has not gone well for the blue and white against top 10 teams. We know the numbers. PSU 3 and 15 against top 10 teams under coach James Franklin. Two of those wins in 2016, Ohio State and Wisconsin, and it should not be this way. The losses are not because of facilities nor NIL, but failure to capture the moment. 2017 at the shoe, Saquon Barkley returns the opening kick, runs right to me. This guy was not happy. Lions led by 15 to start the fourth, and the win probability was over 98%, and they let it slip away. 2018, up 12 in the fourth quarter, eight minutes left. Another sad ending, but an awesome sound bite. We're a great program. We lost to an elite program, and we're that close. We have gotten comfortable being great. We will no longer be comfortable being great. 2021, close again. Turnovers, a big red dog fumble, and a big red dog rumbles the other way. That is no bueno. Now, I am big when it comes to karma and finding the intrinsic values, and this week the stars are aligned. Before PSU beat Utah in the Rose Bowl, the Lions lost 11 straight games against top 10 teams. They say it only takes one, right? Well, the losing streak is over. The only other two prior wins, Wisconsin and Ohio State, they were red or scarlet. And what color is Utah? Exactly. Now, guys, I wanted to talk about individual matchups and stuff like that and also physicality and toughness. But I saw what happened to Lou Holtz and Coach Day's ears are bigger than mine when it comes to toughness. So I'm just going to shut up, zip it, and move on. Not often Callista zips it. Still to come, our scouting report as we break down the Buckeyes. Why are coaches say Ohio State's defense will force Penn State's offense to be good up the middle? That's next on Nittany Game Week. Opening Drive is sponsored by your local Ford store. Visit buyfordnow.com today. Now welcome back to Nittany Game Week. The more I talk, the less time for us to break down the Buckeyes. So it's the best week of the year so far to dissect an opponent. A lot of material to go through, Jay. Jump right in to show us what we can expect in the hey. horseshoe. This is the kind of week that as a coach, when we played Ohio State, I had nightmares all week, especially in October. It was like watching Friday the 13th. But let's talk Buckeyes. Let's get into it right now. We've been waiting all week. Let's talk about their offense first by the numbers. A lot of good numbers here. 36 points a game, 443, 6.9 yards per play, which is really good. Running the ball has been a problem for them, and a lot of that has to do with injuries. Now let's take a look at what we're going to talk about with them. We mentioned the injuries. Who plays running back? Their top three guys were out against Purdue. Wide receiver Ibuka, we did not play last week. Will he play? So we'll have to wait and see what happens with that. So let's talk about them schematically, because one of the things I think Ryan Day has done a great job is adjusting to all the injuries. So let's talk about their run game. Their, their sound, their real, their, the experience of their offense is the guards and center spot on the offensive line. They're going to do some schemes where they're going to try and kick out. I expect them to attack Penn State, try and go downhill. Uh, with the run game, and here's a good shot of how they do that. Again, a man scheme, pushing down, kicking out, creating a gap, and getting north and south. And last week, they really got their run game going against Purdue. Now, let's talk about the pass game. 
and everybody knows about Harrison. One of the things they do with Marvin Harrison, number 18, if you don't know him, I don't know what rock you've been listening, uh, sleeping under during this college football season because he's certainly been a topic of conversation. But they're going to attack. They're not afraid to attack the middle of the field, get high lows on your linebackers, push pressures on them. And Cade Stover, their tight end, has been a, a, a real threat for them. And you look at this play, you take Harrison over the top, you got a, a up and back on that linebacker, and Harrison gets in behind him and gets the play. Here's a great shot up in the end zone. You can see how that window opens up, and they do that. Now, let's talk about some other things they do. Because of the injuries, number five has had to come off a red shirt. He's a sophomore. They were going to red shirt him. He's playing. Zero, Xavier Johnson is a guy who is a wide receiver and a running back, has played corner. Very versatile guy, senior captain. Here they're going to use him as a decoy, get him the ball in the open field and make some things happen and take a look at this. So, they, again, they even fooled number five. He looked like he, was, he thought he was supposed to get the ball, but they get it out to Johnson out in the open field, and they get some plays. One other element wrinkle that they've done now is a wildcat. Their second quarterback, Devin Brown, they've had some trouble up until last week in short yardage inside the 10-yard line. They bring in Devin Brown, who's a power runner, also a quarterback, bring in more tight ends, and you can see what they do here to get him into the end zone. Again, they fake it to the back. The back comes out leads them. They've, Ryan Davis week said they're probably going to expand that package some more, so look for him to get in the game. And yes, he is a quarterback wearing number 33. So let's take a look now at the defensively. Really good numbers like Penn State. They did a great job against Notre Dame with some other teams. You look at that yards per play is really, really good. Let's talk about some of the guys that you may remember last year. Number 44 caused four turnovers, had two interceptions as a defensive lineman. Uh, Tyleek Williams was a problem for Penn State, and Eichenberg had 15 tackles against Penn State. So let's look at them schematically. Three safeties is what they go with. Now, when you say safeties, number six is 6'4", 230. So he may be listed to safety. He's a big guy, and they're going to try and push everything in the middle, clog everything up, make you run to the outside and use their speed. And take a look how aggressive they are with number six. He On this video, he hardly looks like a safety coming up there and making contact with that Notre Dame back in the backfield. Now, talk about when they go to three wideouts. They're versatile. They'll then go to a nickel package with another corner, which gives them the matchups they want. And again, take a look at how they play this now with that extra corner in the game there as they go and they play the coverage and react to it. Again, that's adjustment to look for. See whether seven's in the game or whether uh, six is in the game in that slot. Now, let's talk one last thing here as we go. One of the things that they did last year, they're very big, very aggressive downhill in the run. And if you look at these red boxes, that's where Penn State has predominantly thrown the ball this year, overwhelmingly, which then frees these guys. So look for Penn State to try and diversify the, the pass game to prevent this downhill pressure from these safeties. Again, here he comes, hits the back at, at the line of scrimmage. So going to be an aggressive defense, big challenge for Penn State. I think Drew Allard and those guys, if they protect the football, will be up to that challenge and hopefully come out with a win Saturday, Todd. Thanks very much. Can't wait for this one. It's ironic Penn State has a QB from Ohio despite recruiting the Buckeyes starter Kyle McCord, who won the Pennsylvania State Championship with St. Joseph's Prep. As for Aller, OSU head coach Ryan Day recognizes Drew as a rare guy who got away from the home state. He's an Ohio kid who had a great career. Um, we already had Quinn Ewers committed to us, and then there was a reclassification, and at that point, uh, he was already committed to Penn State. Um, but a lot of respect for him, for his program, and, and certainly being from the state of Ohio, he's a very good player. As for the Buckeyes' number one guy, McCord, he is not as mobile as C.J. Stroud or Braxton Miller. He's a winner, though, that led a late touchdown drive to defeat Notre Dame. Ohio State has won six straight against Penn State. The average margin of victory is only eight points. Coming up, our impact interview. Only two Penn State teams have won at Ohio Stadium. Since the Nittany Lions joined the Big Ten in 1993, this week's guest, a huge part of one of them, will talk with former quarterback Daryl Clark about winning in the horseshoe and what gives the Nittany Lions the best chance to knock off this year's Buckeyes. And make sure to keep the pride picks coming in and throwback pride picks. They're all over our website, NittanyGameWeek.com. We'll have more coming up later in the show. You're watching Nittany Game Week. Impact Interview is sponsored by the Pocono Mountains, where small town charm meets big adventures. Book your trip today by visiting PoconoMountains.com.
Well, welcome back. Time for our impact interview. And our guest this week is the last Penn State quarterback to be named first team all Big Ten back in 2008. And you know what? In 2009, he went ahead and did it again. So he's done it twice. In 2008, he led the spread HD offense, which ranks among the top 10 offenses in conference history in yards, points, and scoring average. They are the only Big Ten team to beat Ohio State in Michigan in consecutive weeks. In 2009, the coaches in the league voted him the most valuable player in the conference. Daryl Clark, thanks so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Appreciate you guys for having me. I'm so excited for this whole week slash weekend. I'm ready to go. Well, look, uh, Ohio quarterbacks coming to Penn State. You know, you were one of the guys that have done that, and it's happened in recent years as well with Sean Clifford and Drew Aller. So, you know, talk about that dynamic for someone from Ohio going from the state next door and coming over and playing for Penn State, and then that return trip. That's got to be really emotional. And what advice would you give Drew in this particular situation, Daryl? It's definitely emotional now. As far as I go, I'm not really sure what the come to be story is for Drew and Sean is how they wound up at Penn State. But for me, when it comes to the Buckeyes, it's personal because they passed on me during the recruiting time. And I wanted to be a Buckeye growing up in Youngstown, Ohio. And when I went to Penn State, I sat down with Coach Joe, God rest his soul, and Coach Jay. And they gave me sound advice. They told me to be patient. So that alone let me know that I'm eventually going to get an opportunity to show Ohio State what they missed out on. And when I finally got that opportunity to play, um, I wanted that game more than anything. You know, and when you become a starting quarterback at Penn State, at, 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 at Wisconsin, Michigan, or Ohio State, it, you know, it goes with the territory. You have to understand that the hype is going to be there with the major game. So you have to be prepared for that. And it's easy. it can happen very easy where you can get distracted with all the hype that surrounds that game. So as long as you continue to focus on what got you there and the preparation, you will be fine because you fall into that trap of the hype, it can affect your play. And that honestly would be the advice I would give Drew if he was uh, standing next to me right now. You're well prepared. You have weapons. You're a weapon yourself. The stage is set. Go and have fun. Go and be Drew. Nittany Nation is here in Columbus. I will be there. We got your back. Let it fly, let it fly, let it fly. Just relax and have your fun. I have very, very much optimism about this, about this game. I haven't been this excited in quite some time. When you were playing 2008, 2009, you were part of the Spread HD offense, which was really a very diverse, maybe the most diverse systems Penn State had with 11 different personnel groups, 100 formation combinations. How important was to have teammates with such high football IQs so that you could not only understand the system, but also everybody could execute that system? Well, it was very important that everybody was on the same page and had an intellect to be able to execute because we had a bunch of different avenues that we could take advantage of. And and, and not only that, you if everyone's on the same page, you'll, you'll be able to play fast and you'll be able to be creative on the fly. You know, we had a receiver that was fast enough to take the top off the defense. We had arguably the best route running slot receiver in the country. I'll say it again, in the country. And then you had another receiver who was so versatile, you can throw him a pass. You can put him at quarterback for a wildcat package. You can put him at running back. You can kick to him. You can punt to him. And he was just as effective in all of those facets of the game. You had great run blocking. You had great pass blocking. You had great route running with two of our best tight ends in Andrew Corliss and Mickey Shuler. We had lightning and thunder in the backfield as our running back positions. Then you had yours truly, who was, I feel like I was pretty effective with my feet, but I also took pride in taking care of the football and uh, making the throws and making the right throws uh, when it came time to, uh, to make it happen. So it was very important that everybody was on the same page. Jay, obviously you were the mastermind behind all the play calling, and we were fortunate enough to have all the pieces to implement. It. Hey, Daryl, like most of Penn State's great quarterbacks, uh, you had a tremendous relationship with, with your head coach. How important is it for quarterbacks to connect with the head coach and understand each other? Sure. Well, naturally, you know, the quarterback is the extension uh, of the head coach. You know, he's just out there on the field. You know, he's a voice. Uh, you know, here is one sound, one mind with the head coach as well as the offensive coordinator. You know, so you both are communicating with one another, making sure everything is on par and you're an extension to the team. And then if there's an instance where there's a message that coach is trying to get across that may not get to a few players, and that does happen from time to time, 
that was when I would step in and, you know, try and deliver the same type of message, maybe in a different way. And it would, and it, and it would work being tied in and being, you know, communicative with, with coach and being connected together as much as possible was very important from not only, you know, a schematic standpoint, but a leadership standpoint as well. Oh, it is good to catch up with Captain Clark prior to the game in the horseshoe. We're going to step aside for the TV show to take a break. We will continue our interview. So if you want to see the entire conversation with first team all Big Ten QB Daryl Clark, make sure you go to NittanyGameWeek.com for the entire interview along with other web exclusive content. Still to come, our scrap metal winner is a special one from the special teams unit. When you return two punts for touchdowns, yeah, you deserve some recognition. What else Daquan Hardy does to deserve the honor? We're heading into the final minutes here on Nittany Game Week. Scrap Metal is sponsored by the We Are In, voted number one game day restaurant in Center County. Follow us on Facebook and visit thewearein.com or call for dinner or room reservations. All right, Tom, here we go. This week's Scrap Metal winner, and not only does he return punts, but what a great play on third down to make it fourth down with that quick screen and the tackle to set up what was really unprecedented. Congratulations to him this week, Daquan Hardy, you know, a young man from Penn Hills, probably going to get accused of taking care of the Pittsburgh guys again to my recruiting area. But, uh, you know, to do what he did, he makes the tackle, and he turns around, goes back, and, and returns a punt for a touchdown. And to be the first guy in the history of Penn State football to have two punt returns for touchdowns in the same game is certainly well-deserving of, of winning the Scrap Metal Award this week. In addition to a television show, we're bringing Nittany Lions together with our depth chart at NittanyGameWeek.com, connecting businesses that support the show with our viewers. Our goal is to build a team that keeps our home towns strong. If you haven't noticed yet, we got a lot to share with you when it comes to college football. It doesn't all fit into the show. Make sure to check out NittanyGameWeek.com for web-exclusive content. We finish with some of those pride picks, mixing in some of the throwbacks. Keep showing us your spirit. For Jay and Tom, I'm Todd. Thanks so much for watching Nittany Game Week. We'll see you next time.